How many of you out there feel that there is something wrong? There is something not right in society. I know you can name a hundred or a thousand different things that are going on right now. But what I think is happening is they're getting ready to pull the plug on the financial system in the United States. And the reason I say this is because I had a very interesting conversation with two managers at two different banks, both basically saying the same thing to me. I was trying to transfer money and you know pay off a HELOC and you know for one reason or another the transfer wasn't going through. I'll let you listen to those audio recordings and you can hear for yourself what they were saying. I also want to ask you how many of you have been experiencing telecommunications problems on your your phone, your mobile phone, your computer, computer platforms that you use on a daily basis, they just don't seem to be working right. Text messages not going through instantaneously like they used to. And I'll get a little bit into that as well because it all ties in. All right, so without further ado, I'll let you listen to several conversations um, that I had with Bank of America and with my bank. And you be the judge as to what's going on and what you can do. I do not give financial advice on this channel. So here we go. Thank you for calling Bank of America. This is Brianna located in Phoenix. Please be advised this call may be monitored and recorded. To better assist you, can I please have your first and last name? It is Deborah Welsh. Thank you, and thank you for being with us for 28 years. That is much appreciated. What are we helping you with today? Um, balance transfer. I got another one of um, these promos in the mail from you guys, and yeah. I'd like to uh, transfer the balance on my HELOC over to Bank of America. All right. Um, in order to see the promotion you received, I need to verify you a bit further. If I were to send an authorization code to your phone number, then I'm sending that now. It'll be a six-digit code inside the text. Just read that back and we should be good. Okay. Actually, it's failing. It's like bouncing back. It doesn't want me to text that number after all. Let me see. Is that the only cell phone number you happen to have access to right now? Uh, yeah. It's yeah, I don't know why I would not accept your um, mobile number. I mean, there could be reason for it, but what's happening right now is there's been so many fraudulent balance transfers and direct deposits put in lately that um, the fraud team has kind of put this extra layer of verification. And um, if for whatever reason the system is not going to let us use your phone number, oftentimes our clients are getting like stuck, kind of where we're, we're outside the gate. And not only can we not process the transfer for you, but we can't even see it. Um, are you an online banking user? Because I can walk you through and you know, guide you through the um, self-service steps if you want. Um, uh... So this is the beginning of the issue here. Been with this bank 28 years, been banking with them <clears throat> for 28 years, and the system cannot recognize me. I can't be validated by their system. And of course, the excuse, as always, is, well, there's been a lot of transfer fraud, and there's been a lot of direct deposit fraud at the bank, and we just have to be very, very careful. The promotion that you received, Deborah, mm -hmm. does it have like a transaction window end date on it, like the date you have to take advantage of the offer by? Yeah, but I also got the HELOC a payoff amount this afternoon. So Okay, how long is that good for? Today. Is it? Okay. But I can give you the amount um, that it goes up every day if the transfer doesn't go through today. It goes, I up, see. it goes up by $12.53 per 
daily. That's the daily accrual. Daily. Okay, got you. Definitely understand why you'd be interested in get, getting rid of that. Um, mm -hmm. For <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm so sorry that we're running into this. It's it's meant to protect our clients from fraud and losses, but every now and then this happens for some reason, and it hurts a uh, a real client, you know. Um, so what I would say is when we put in a balance transfer request, mm -hmm. usually we are sending out the money after two business days. So hypothetically, if we were able to get the request in today, the funds would get released on Wednesday the 7th. That's usually our turnaround time. Mm -hmm. But when it is a HELOC or a loan as opposed to like a major credit card that we're paying off, mm -hmm. we, always have to, we always have to put a check in the mail. Um, so that can certainly slow you down several business days. Um, so when it comes to the check, it's more more often that, that we would quote about five to nine business days oh for that God. other creditor to receive your money, yes. I find this interesting because I had my HELOC set up on auto bill pay. Now the HELOC and my personal account where my auto bill pays come out of are with the same bank. And I went in there one day and asked the branch manager, I said, hey, can you tell me why it's taking anywhere from four to six business days for my HELOC payments to post to my HELOC account? She goes, well, do you have them, are you sending a check? I said, no, they're on automatic bill pay. Isn't that EFT? And she says, oh, well, you know, we have to send a check to a loan payment, to the to your HELOC account. And I looked at her and I said, what? It's, you're the same bank. I don't understand. So you write out a check, drop it in the mail, wait for it to be delivered, and the department is probably just in another area of your main building somewhere in Phoenix or, you know, Oklahoma City. So what happens when we put in the balance transfer request is we take the HELOC, the loan number to the HELOC, mm -hmm. and then we'll take the address where they can actually receive check payment, mm -hmm. and that's always found like on your billing statement, and okay. then we'll take the dollar amount, and, and knowing that we're going to be sending a check, you may want to pop that dollar amount up just a little bit um, above and beyond what you had anticipated. But that still doesn't solve the problem of the fact that <laughs> I can't get through with the authentication. My system's not going to let me do the balance transfer right now. So what I would say is um, perhaps tomorrow the system won't be, um, you know, refusing to let us use your cell phone number to, to go through the verification. I can give you the best callback number to get directly into my department, and you can always try, try getting through verification again tomorrow. Or if you were to go into the financial center, um, I know it sounds silly to suggest that in today's day and age, but if you were to go into the financial center with your two forms of ID, they should be able to get your uh, balance transfer in as well if for whatever reason the system isn't letting us verify you over the phone. Um, can a supervisor, are you able? Can a supervisor no. get this through? Nope. Nope. Um, unfortunately, it's it's... It's something that we're we're all kind of beholden to. It's it, it's something where if we have technology that believes there's any reason to fear that maybe your cell phone number has been ported out or compromised or anything, it at its discretion it could temporarily make it so that we cannot use that, and then there are no other alternative things that we can use to verify you. If you had like a family member's cell phone at home or a landline or some, a different number that I could try to get a hold of you on, mm -hmm. we may have more options, but, but our supervisors are going to be just as stuck as I am. They can't bypass it in any circumstance. Um, so you want me to try this again tomorrow, but we yeah. don't know why my phone number is not being recognized on your end. So am I going to get the same it's result tomorrow? It's possible, or it's possible that it could just go through fine because this number is on file. Let me take a look at it in your profile here. Okay. 
cell phone, been on file since 2020, no updates. So we, there's just, there's a lot of technology and, and I don't know this to be the case, but this is just one of like many potential examples when it comes to cybersecurity. And that is that, um, for instance, fraudulent people, they can attempt to clone phone numbers. It's called porting out or spoofing a phone number. If you call your cell phone carrier, they can actually check your cell phone number and see if your phone number has been ported out at all. But there are things that fraudulent people can do to try to clone or mimic your cell phone number. And if there is any fear in our system that maybe someone attempted to compromise your phone number or clone it or something, then it could temporarily block us from using your phone number to verify you, even if it's really your phone number and we're really talking to you. So that's just one example of like how sophisticated these hackers and stuff are becoming. Um, so in the end, I know it's super inconvenient and I will absolutely submit a complaint about the fact that I was unsuccessful at helping you. But, um, but there are reasons that are kind of outside of like my wheelhouse where we may not, you know, always trust a phone number 100% of the time. So I would say um, call my direct department. I'll give you the best number to get straight through tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we're good. Um, but that's the best that, that I could do. So here we have a bank, big national international bank, that is saying that a check has to be written on the account to pay off the loan. While they do EFTs, electronic funds transfers, on a daily basis, um, I have online banking. I can transfer money out of um, MidFirst Bank to some other bank, and it happens instantaneously. But yet, this bank is telling me, no, we can't do that because the system can't verify you. Okay. So if I call that number and we still can't get it to go through, you said I can go to a Bank of America branch? You can go to a Bank of America Financial Center, yes. Is that the same um, as, I mean, with, another Bank yeah. of America bank? Right, yep. Or is a financial um, center just, something different? No, no, it's a branch. It's just oh. the, it's either trying to change the terminology. <laughs> That's oh, all, great. but no, you're us, right. Confuse us even more. <laughs> you're right, exactly. Um, so I will, but, but I'm going to go ahead and submit your feedback. I'm truly sorry. I know it's important to get the funds sent out as, as soon as possible. I know it's not a good experience. Um, you know, it's just one of the, the rare negative side effects, I guess, of the, them trying to combat the, the rampant fraud that's been going on. But, um, but yes, definitely give us a call back tomorrow morning and see if, or, or any time you have time tomorrow, and hopefully we can just get through for you. And what is but if not, you know. No phone number to call you. I actually had a, I mean, it's no big deal, but you should put, you know, tell the yeah. um, powers that be over there, they should put a phone number on these offers. So in case anybody has questions, I know, I know nobody likes to talk to anybody anymore, but, you know, it, it would be helpful. I mean, I got your phone number, obviously, from the back of the card. I will submit the feedback. Anytime a client says something like that, um, the feedback that we type up now, it all gets reviewed. There's like a designated team for it. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly the more that, the more of um, our, our clients, like candid feedback that we can send out, the better off, the better we can, you know, get. So I certainly will submit that for you. But now you at least have the direct number right into my department. Mm -hmm. We do sales promotions, the balance transfers, and I really hope we're able to get this process. But so just let them go through their process. Let them, um, you know, try to verify you, and hopefully there's no issue with the uh, the number tomorrow. I'm so sorry about that once again. And if there is, I can just go to the Bank of America Financial branch Center. here on Carefree Highway. Okay. Absolutely, that's right. Valley. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, they can do, they do direct deposits and balance transfers now in the branch, so you should be absolutely fine on that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that was anywhere from a 30 to 40 minute phone conversation with Bank of America where absolutely nothing was resolved. Nothing got fixed, nothing got transferred, there were no answers to why 
the system can't verify me, uh, why my phone number has been flagged, so to speak. And it was, you know, she was very nice. You know, she's a very nice girl. She was trying to help as much as she could, but in the end, uh, she really wasn't able to help at all. The following morning, I got up early and I tried calling Bank of America again to see if the system security issue with, with me and, and verifying me had been fixed. And the first thing I got was a recording that said, your approximate wait time is 27 minutes. So, <laughs> you know what I said to myself. I, and I got, my, I got my truck and I went down to the Bank of America branch out where I live and, you know, got to speak to one of the front office managers down there and said, look, this is the problem I'm having. So they told me I should come down here and have you verify me in person. And that's what I'm doing. So to make a long story short, uh, we were on the phone with Bank of America. Um, I don't know where they were located. It was another main office. But we were on the phone with them for an hour and 15 minutes. And at the end of that meeting, three-way meeting, it was me, the local uh, B of A front-end manager person, and then another person that was on the other end of, you know, on the phone, so we were kind of having a three-way conversation. When all was said and done, um, they finally decided this is how you can get the funds transferred to your HELOC to pay it off. And the offers that they send you come with, you know, pr um, checks, blank checks that you can write out. She said, make sure when you fill it out, you put your HELOC number on this and you tell your bank that it's an access check. So it's as good as cash. It should clear right away. You'll have no problem. So I leave there thinking, okay, everything's fixed. And um, in the meantime, I was having a discussion with the woman at Bank of America because we were on hold a lot when we were in her office. And I said, you know what? It seems to me like the banks are making it more and more difficult for people to access their funds, transfer their funds. Um, they have no problem depositing money um, and rolling over accounts, even within, this, within the same bank. And her response to that was she shook her head. She said, yep. That's what's been going on. I went, uh -huh. So I said, I asked her, what do you make of all these branch closings? And she said, well, you know, Bank of America, I said, Bank of America is closing a branch in Anthem, which is right around the corner. And she said, I know, I know. I said, is that because they're going all digital? In other words, there will be no... Um, there will be no personal banking services anymore. And if you want to do banking, if you want to do, you know, transfers, rollovers, deposits, whatever, you're going to have to find some way to do them online digitally. And she said, yes. She said, that looks like where we're headed. She said, but don't worry, this, this branch isn't closing. I said, okay. So off I went to Mid First Bank. I learned something at mid first. Well, the branch manager was trying to get all my paperwork straight and work with this check, you know, access check. She didn't really know what an access check was, but she said, we'll get it figured out and we'll get it deposited. We got your loan number on there. You know, it's going bank to bank. So yeah, the funds should be available by tomorrow morning. So we were talking and um, I asked her, do you think the banks will be closing soon for a holiday? You know, just a holiday because the financial system's kind of in a mess right now. You know, we're having all kinds, we're in debt up to our ears as a nation and, you know, they're going to reset the currency and go to some type of, you know, when the banks reopen again, we're going to be on some type of a, a digital currency system that 
really isn't based on cash anymore. And she kind of looked at me, she was kind of puzzled. She said, I don't know, but something is going on, but I'm not quite sure what it is, what it is. I said, okay. I said, so if I wanted to take a large portion of the amount I have on deposit with this bank and withdraw it in cash, and she shook her head, mm-mm, mm-mm. I said, what do you mean no? She said, no. She said, you cannot withdraw more than $2,000. And I don't remember if she said in a 24 or 48 hour period. And she said that amount is aggregate. That's an aggregate amount. So say you had three accounts in there with 10,000. You can't withdraw in that time frame 2,000 out of each account. It's 2,000 total out of all the accounts that you have with that bank. I went, like, well that would take somebody forever to get their money out in cash. And she said, we could issue you a check. And I said, well, that's not the point. You know, if something happens with the banking system, what's that check gonna be worth? You know, really, I'd rather have it in cash. She said, oh no. I said, why do you think they won't do that? Because I can remember going down to the bank, this was several years back, but I had to pay a roofer and he, he gave me a discount if I paid in cash. So I went down to the bank, withdrew the cash, and, and paid him. I said, I didn't have a problem then. She said, well, I, I, how did she put it? She said, I think they're afraid right now of a run on the banks. I said, oh, well then, that makes sense, I guess. You know, so people can't get their money out. Bottom line, people can't get their money out, at least only by little, little pieces at a time over a 24 or 48 hour period. I mean, if you have nothing better to do with your day, then go down to the bank every 24 hours or 48 hours and you know, wait for $2,000 in cash. God bless you, because it would probably take a lot of people um, quite a while to do that.